Okay, let's take a look at how to fully encrypt your laptop. So first, let's talk for just a minute about why you would want to fully encrypt your laptop. Now, if you followed any of my blog postings, or if I've come over and fixed your computer, or anything like that, I'm sure that you've seen or heard me preach about security. And one thing that people tend to forget is that Microsoft and Windows and security really don't go in the same sentence. So any of the information that is currently on my laptop is actually not really very secure. So what we want to do is actually use a program called TrueCrypt, which is free and open source, to encrypt, in this case, the entire hard drive. So what that means if, is if somebody steals my laptop, then they can use my laptop. They could format the hard drive and reuse it, but they can't get to the data. And that's the most important thing. I want to make sure that anything I have on this laptop as far as the data is concerned is absolutely safe and the only way to do it is to encrypt the entire hard drive. So how do we do this? Well the nice thing is the software to do this is free and open source and it is very good at what it does. Okay so your next question is probably well why is the software to do this free and open source? Well let's take a look at the frequently asked questions at truecrypt.org and we'll see. So if we scroll down and take a look, it says, will TrueCrypt be open source and free forever? Well, because it's released under the GPL, the source code is and has been for quite some time uh, freely available on the net. But the answer from the TrueCrypt maintainers and developers is, yes, it will. We will, we will never create a commercial version of TrueCrypt as we believe in open source and free security software. And so there you have it. And this is absolutely, hands down, the best encryption software out there. Alright, so let's go ahead and get it installed. So we're at www.truecrypt.org, and we're going to go to Downloads. So we're going to go ahead and download the latest stable version, which is right now 6.1.a, and we're going to download it for Windows Vista, XP, and 2000. So when I click Download, Firefox prompts me to download the file and this is actually the installer file. Uh, I'm going to save it in a special folder that I have for downloads and we click Save and it takes just a second to download the file. Now in the Firefox window, uh, downloads window, I'm just going to go ahead and double click it and I'm going to get a warning, hey this is an executable file, they may contain viruses and all that. If you download this from the TrueCrypt website or from my own website then the file is absolutely safe. So we're going to go ahead and click OK and let's run the installer. And we're going to accept the license agreements. And I'm going to go ahead and do an, a full installation on the system. Uh, you could go ahead and just extract this so that nothing is actually installed on the system. You can't actually run TrueCrypt without having to fully install it. And that's for security reasons, um, uh, you know, maybe for whatever reason you don't want uh, certain authorities to be able to, to easily tell if you're running TrueCrypt and encryption software. But anyway, in this case, I'm going to choose install and we're going to install it for all users. We're going to add TrueCrypt to the start menu, add an icon to the desktop, create a restore point, etc. So we just click install. And it tells us that it's been successfully installed. It does come with a, uh, it will redirect you to a beginner's tutorial on it, but I'm not worried about viewing that. So we're going to click finish. And I'm going to close out of downloads in Firefox. And notice now we have a TrueCrypt icon on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and run the TrueCrypt icon. And again, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to fully encrypt the entire drive. I want to go to System, Encrypt System Partition Drive. And we're going to take a look at the type of system encryption. In this case, I'm going to do a normal system encryption. I'm not worried about doing a hidden encryption or, or hiding the operating system that I'm worried on. I am uh, more concerned about keeping uh, potential laptop thieves or somebody like that out of it, not hiding potentially from uh, some sort of government agency. So I'm just going to choose normal and click next. And I have a choice here to encrypt the Windows system partition, which is typically in most cases your C drive or C partition, or do I want to encrypt the whole drive? Uh, there are a couple of things about this, but in my case, I'm going to go ahead and encrypt the entire hard drive. In my case, I have a C partition, 
a D partition, and then of course my DVD writer and some removable drives. But I want to tell it, in my case, to encrypt the C as well as the D partition, in my case. So that's the whole drive that I want to encrypt. So I'm going to click Next, and it gives us a warning. And you'll find that TrueCrypt makes it very, very difficult for you to encrypt a drive that shouldn't be encrypted for whatever technical reasons. Okay, and so it gives you some warnings after you start encrypting. You can't create any other extended partitions on it, etc. I'm going to click OK. Now I want to encrypt the host protected area, and so I'm going to go ahead and click Yes because I want everything encrypted. And so TrueCrypt is going to go through and detect any hidden sectors. And in my case, I have a number of operating systems. I'm doing a single boot. That means that in my case, I just have Windows installed on this. I'm not doing like a dual boot between XP and Vista or maybe XP and Linux or something like that. I've just got a single boot. So I'm going to click Next. And here is one of the most important choices. What type of encryption algorithm do I want to use? And I've got AES, Serpent, Two Fish, AES, Two Fish, etc. Uh, in most cases, the uh, standard AES encryption algorithm is going to be more than sufficient. So I'm going to choose AES. And I'm going to leave the default hash algorithm on there. And this is the most important part, is choosing the actual password. All right. Now, number one, your security is only as good as your password. And so we want to choose something that is not easily guessable. For instance, I've got, uh, I believe it's a 26-character password that I'm about to use here. And mine is a combination of upper and lower case, et cetera, letters and numbers and all that. The maximum length is 64 characters. You really don't want to do anything less than my kind of general rule of thumb is 10 characters. But the more characters that you have and the more random the characters, the more secure. But the caution here is once this drive is fully encrypted, if you forget this password, that's it. You cannot access the data on this particular laptop again. All right, so anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and choose our password. All right, so now I have it entered and confirmed, and I'm going to click Next. And you can just kind of run your mouse across this current pool content to help uh, with a little bit better hashing on it. And we click Next. And it tells us that the keys, salt, and other data for the encryption uh, and for the hash have been successfully created. Uh, if we want to generate new keys, we can go back. Anyway, we're fine, so we're going to click Next. Now, this is critical here, a rescue disk. What's going to happen is TrueCrypt is going to force you to create a rescue disk or rescue CD so that if something happens, you can decrypt the drive. But let me caution you, it does not store the password on this rescue disk. If you forget the password, game over. So it's telling us that, hey, it's going to create this uh, ISO file, which is like a snapshot of a CD, and it's going to put it in our My Documents file. So we're going to click Next. And it says, look, the rescue disk image, the ISO file, has been created and stored in this file. Now we need to burn this to a rescue disk uh, or burn this rescue disk to a CD or DVD. So we need some CD burning software to convert an ISO file and that's freely available and they give you a link to it. I already have it installed so let me go ahead and grab a CD and we'll burn this. Okay so now I've inserted a blank CD into my drive so I need to fire up my CD burning software and the one that I'm using is uh, freely available. It's CD Burner XP. It's also the one that TrueCrypt happens to recommend. And so once I fire up CD Burner XP Pro, then it says, hey, uh, we want to, what do you want to do? Make a rip CDs or create an audio CD? What we want to do is create a new data CD uh, or create one from an ISO image. So we select that one. And now what we want to do is let's go to File, Write Disk from ISO File. We want to select our ISO file. That's going to be the one that uh, TrueCrypt created for us, which is in the My Documents folder. So we're going to select that one. And we're going to leave everything else alone, and we're going to hit Write Disk. 
and it's going to take just a minute and this is going to convert this ISO file into a CD and actually burn it for us. Alright, once it's finished it tells me that everything was successful so we click OK and we click done and now we're done or finished with our CD burning software and your computer should automatically eject the CD. Now what you want to do is you actually want to push that CD tray back into the laptop or back into your computer uh, because TrueCrypt is actually going to make sure that you created that CD because that's kind of your fail safe if something goes wrong with the encryption. So now that I've pushed the tray back in I'm going to click Next and TrueCrypt automatically verifies that you did actually create this rescue CD and that the CD is in the tray. And so we click Next and it says OK. Um, whenever it's creating this encryption uh, do you want TrueCrypt to go ahead and actually erase, securely erase, the data that's already on the drive um, that you've previously deleted? And so what happens is if you delete a file out of Windows or most other operating systems, the file's not actually deleted. The data is still there on the hard drive and can be fairly easily recovered. But TrueCrypt has the ability to go ahead and wipe that hard drive or wipe that data that's been previously deleted while it's encrypting so that there really is no data left that can be recovered. All right. Now this is not going to erase your existing information. This is only files that have been previously deleted. So in my case I'm going to tell it, no nah, I'm not really worried about wiping. I didn't have anything ultra secure on here to begin with. So we're going to click Next and it's going to say okay let's test the system and make sure that everything will work correctly it's going to actually kind of pre-install TrueCrypt uh, the bootloader and all that and uh, make sure that everything will work so we're going to go ahead and click test this is going to restart the machine and then we'll continue on uh, with this once it gets booted back up okay now that TrueCrypt has restarted the computer and preloaded the uh, pre-boot authentication and tested it out it comes back up and says hey the pre-test was completed and that it is ready to start encrypting now it's pretty important to note that if the power supply is suddenly interrupted while encrypting the existing data or if the operating system crashes due to some sort of error uh, then portions of the data may be corrupted or lost so when you start this encrypting you want to make sure course number one that you have backups of everything remembering rule number one you're only as successful as your last backup and you also want to try to make sure that you do everything possible to make sure that the computer keeps running during the encryption process now it's important to note that you can actually stop the encryption uh, in progress if you need to free up uh, computing power to actually use this laptop but in my case I'm gonna go ahead and start the encryption and just let it go so we hit encrypt and it gives us one last warning again about how to boot to the TrueCrypt rescue disk and etc. And so you can print this out or whatever just so you have it handy. I'm going to click OK. And the encryption process has started. Now depending on the size of your hard drive and the uh, speed of your processor and the amount of RAM that you have, it may take uh, more or less time to do the full encryption. If you notice in my case it's estimating uh, kind of bouncing between three and four hours to do this. So I'm just going to let it sit here and go and once it's done I'll have a fully encrypted hard drive.